It's a lot of it's a lot of big names in this lawsuit, Dream. It's a lot of names in this lawsuit, Dream. What are you doing? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome. You guys, I want to talk about music producer, The Dream. You know, the hit maker for Beyonce and Rihanna. Oh, and Mariah Carey. Well, that loser is being accused of all wording and SEX in a new lawsuit. The lawsuit was filed on Tuesday, June 4th, on behalf of Ch Chanaz Mangro against Terrius The Dream. Yeah. The complaint alleges the dream subjected her to an abusive, violent, and manipulative relationship filled with physical assault, violent sexual encounters, and horrific psychological manipulation. You guys, it is so bad. Oh my gosh. According to court documents, in 2012, at just 21 years old, Miss Mangro, who was raised in the Netherlands, was granted a three-year O-1B visa to work in the United States as a songwriter. As her three-year visa term was coming to an end, the Dream's childhood friend contacted Mangro through social media and asked her to send her music to share with the Dream's manager. Dream's team then asked Miss Mangro to meet with Dream in person and record music. However, according to the complaint, Dream lured the 23-year-old Miss Mangro into his deeply sadistic world. In both Los Angeles and Atlanta, Dream used his age and influence to manipulate, coerce, and control Miss Mangro, including telling her repeatedly that she could be part of a special sanctuary relationship with him like he had with Beyonce and Rihanna if she did everything he said. You guys, let me tell you. This fool, this hamburglar, the dream, told the accuser, Miss Mangro, he knew about Beyonce's pregnancy before Jay-Z did. How? How when Beyonce was never pregnant? We saw her folded belly live on television. <laughs> Wait, is he saying that he knew about the fake pregnancy before Jay-Z? Is he saying he helped Beyonce plan that fake pregnancy, that folded belly? I mean, come on. But let's keep it going. Listen, behind, don't do not. Don't even message me about Beyonce. I got a few DMs about Beyonce when I did the hair video. And yeah, they were pretty mad, but they'll get over it. But this is not about Beyonce, but let's keep going. Within a few days, Dream told Miss Mangro that she was his wife through art, that he loved her, and that he would always protect her. But he did the exact opposite. According to the lawsuit, in reality, Dream controlled all aspects of Miss Mangro's stay in the United States, including where she could live, who she could speak to, what she could eat, and where she could go. The dream subjected Miss Mangro to violent sexual encounters that left her badly bruised, forced her to drink excessive amounts of alcohol by physically pulling her head back and pouring alcohol down her throat, strangled and choked her to the point of almost losing consciousness. He all with her in the back of a sprinter van. On the same night, he forced her to engage in SEX acts in a public movie theater and recorded her doing sexual acts to threaten her into silence. You guys, this lawsuit is so bad. It is sick. It is 60 pages long. And if you guys want to know every detail, it's so important to know about these things, not just the basic information. Tiffany Red, shout out to Tiffany Red. If you don't know who she is, Cassie's best friend, she read it live on her Instagram. And I have it. So I will play it. It's long. It's very long, but it's, it's a good read. Like, she did amazing it is so bad you guys you oh you have to know these things you have to know who you some of you be worshiping praising these people are losers these people are demons they're demonic and they have no souls by the way miss mangro is represented by douglas h wigdor and meredith a fire talk that's 
Cassie's lawyers, okay? So shout out to Tiffany Red for reading this. She did a great job. I'm going to play it for you guys. It's very long. It's like two hours. But it's, if you have the time, if you don't, you can always pause it and come back later. Or you can just, while you're doing whatever you're doing, you could play it and listen to it because it's a good, 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 good one. It is so detailed. It is disgusting. It is 60 pages long. But it's important to know what these people in power are doing. You know, the nasty, filthy ungodly things that they are doing so you guys please like please subscribe to my channel so here goes tiffany red reading the lawsuit against the dream thank you guys peace i'm gonna just jump i'm just gonna just jump right into it okay so this lawsuit was filed um in uh, let me see was this filed in california yes this lawsuit was filed in california um and it was filed um, the lawyer that filed it is, um, Douglas Wigdor. That's also the, the lawyer, um, who, who represents, uh, represented Cassie in her lawsuit. Um, so the woman who filed this lawsuit, I don't want to say her name wrong. Shanaz, I believe is how you say it. Shanaz Mangro, um, versus... Terius just I don't know how to say his name the dream y'all know who I'm talking about um okay so uh, shall we get into this let me see preliminary statement okay so here's a preliminary statement the dream is an award-winning singer songwriter and producer who has risen to fame writing and producing songs for the musical stars of the last two decades he has hailed as one of the um one of the prolific hit makers in the industry and is considered innovative and incredibly talented i agree um, in 2014, Miss Shanaz Mangro was 23 years old, working in the United States on an international visa from the Netherlands, hoping to land her big break as a singer-songwriter. When Associates of, of Dream reached out to Miss Mangro via social media, she was thrilled. She immediately sent along samples of her work and was quickly invited to join Dream and his partner, Tricky Stewart, in Atlanta. Far from being the amazing breakthrough opportunity she imagined, Miss Mangrove's experience with, um, with Dream was nothing short of a prolonged nightmare. Under the guise of pursuing a legitimate recording and publishing contract with, um, with, with Miss Mangrove, Dream lured the young and vulnerable artist into an abusive, violent, and manipulative relationship filled with physical assault, violent sexual encounters, and horrific psychological manipulation. In both Atlanta and Los Angeles, Dream used his age and influence in the industry to manipulate the young artist into believing that she needed him to, to be successful and roped her into his world through false, false promises to gain Miss Mangrove's complete trust, including assuring her that he would sponsor the extension of her international visa. Now that's really important because anybody anybody who um, knows anybody who like uh, is from overseas that works in the States knows that they have to get a work visa. I know like personally, I know two people personally who um, have to get work visas to, to stay here and to work here. So that's a big deal. Um, so he assured the extension of her international visa, telling her he would write blockbuster songs for her if she became part of his so-called sanctuary, and sanctuaries in quotes, like he did for Beyonce and Rihanna, offering her lofty visions of recording and publishing contracts with major labels, assuring her he would appropriately advocate for her and promises promising her she would open for Beyonce's upcoming tour, going as far as to force Miss Mangro to diet and exercise excessively to prepare for the tour. In reality, Dream used Miss Mangro for his base desires, which manifested into violent sexual acts and vicious psychological torture. For example, Dream locked Miss Mangro in a dark room adjacent to a recording studio, violently having sex with her and then leaving her alone naked in the dark in the dark for hours on end, returning again to have sex with her and demand that she tell him she loved him. 
Dream controlled all aspects of Miss Mangrove's stay in the United States, including providing her housing, transportation, and food expenses. He kept a close track of her location at all times, calling and texting her at all hours to demand updates on her location, or even keeping his own key to Miss Mangrove's hotel room so that he could enter whenever he pleased with no notice. Dream forced Miss Mangrove to drink excessive amounts of alcohol by roughly pulling her head back by her hair and pull her, pouring alcohol down her throat. Dream frequently strangled Miss Mangrove during violent sex, sometimes with his hands and once using the collar of her dress. On multiple occasions, Dream choked Miss Mangrove so so intensely that she almost lost consciousness. Now, I just want to pause real quick and say that the Dream made a statement today to the New York Times and he said that um that you know this is not true so this is all alleged alleged this isn't a lawsuit um and so yeah just want to throw that that out there um she says dream refuse dream refused to wear a condom and regularly ejaculated inside of Miss Mangro against her protest when he discovered she was taking birth control he became enraged because he believed it it to be a sign of disrespect she was forced to hide her birth control pills under a mattress. Dream berated Miss Mangro while having sex with her, calling her ungrateful and insisting that she praise him and declare her loyalty to him. Dream once raped Miss Mangro in the back of a renovated Sprinter van the same evening that he forced her to engage in sex acts in, pu in a public movie theater. Dream recorded Miss Mangro during sexual acts and used the existence of the recording to threaten Miss Mangro into silence. His depraved behavior was facilitated by his record label Contra Paris LLC, as well as Epic Records. The label Dream convinced to invest um, convinced to invest in Miss uh, Miss Mangro, despite the fact that he never intended to truly support her career trajectory, but instead wanted to corp um, co wait cooperate funding um, to assist in his trafficking venture. Huh. The result of Dream's heinous attacks was the fact that Miss Mangrove's career was upended. Her music was taken from her without any explanation. Contra Paris never provided her any compensation and every attempt to revive her career has been hijacked by Dream and those who supported him. Over more than a year, Miss Mangrove experienced trauma that she has still not recovered from. She is broken as an artist, constantly afraid for her physical safety and plagued by reminders of the violence and control she experienced at the hands of Dream, who has continued his successful career unscathed by the by his horrific acts nearly a decade later miss mangro is still putting the pieces of her life back together but she knows that without speaking up about what dream did to her she will never be able to heal from the harm he caused she therefore brings this lawsuit to speak up for herself and other female artists who have been uh, tormented by powerful and selfish men in the recording industry. She seeks justice and accountability to prevent further horrific abuse like she experienced and to regain her sense of self as an artist and as a woman. Y'all, this is a fucking mess. What's somebody say? This year is in shambles? Yeah, this year is in shambles. And the music industry is going out bad. The music industry is going out so bad. Like... Okay, let me see. Parties. Plaintiff Shanaz Mangro is a 33-year-old woman and um, is domiciled in the Netherlands. Defendant Terry's Dream, I don't know how to say his whole name, upon information and belief, um, is domiciled in Atlanta, Georgia. Defendant Contra Paris LLC is limited liability. Okay, so this is just saying where everything is at. Let me get to, okay, it says factual allegations. The Dream has established himself as a talented and powerful songwriter and producer and as a violent misogynist. Dream is a Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter producer known for authoring some of the most famous modern songs, including Rihanna's Umbrella, Justin Bieber's Baby, Mariah Carey's Touch My Body, and Kanye West's All of the Lights. I didn't know he did that song. He is also known as a go-to producer and songwriter for Beyonce, penning hit songs, Single Ladies, uh, Run the World, uh, Partition, and is listed in the credits on every album of Beyonce since 2008, including Beyonce's most recent, Cowboy Carter. 
His accomplishments earned him eight Grammy Awards and a nomination for the newly created category of Songwriter of the Year at the 65th Grammy Awards. This is why I'm reading this, because this is like the top. Like this is this is one of the biggest songwriters in the game. And this allegedly is what he's doing with his position. Dream also recorded and released his own music on various other labels, including Def Jam Recordings and Capitol Records. Dream is also well-connected in the business side of the music industry, being named executive vice president of A&R at Def Jam Recordings in 2012, where he signed and produced new artists to the label. In 2014, Dream launched his own record label called Contra Paris. He incorporated the label as a limited liability company, Contra Paris LLC, in Delaware in December 2014. According to Dream, Contra Paris was a designer and culture label or an art label founded along with Jay-Z. As he said in one interview, it's about art overall, period. Anything that's art we're trying to get into. I have a lot of people hitting me on Instagram, guys and girls that are trying to fuse music with culture, whatever that culture is, as long as it's art. It's not clear if Contra Paris ever signs any artist to its label, aside from Miss Mangro, or whether any records were released by the label. Today, the Contra Paris website appears partially defunct and seems to function as a, a consignment shop for a handful of items of clothing that presumably belong to Dream. Dream has regularly maintained that he has a soft spot as in quotes, for women. In an interview with New York uh, with New York Magazine, he was commended for his uh, for his songs celebrating tough cookie feminism, and was quoted as saying, "I've always had a soft spot for women because my mom uh, because of my mom, just their power. Man's biggest enemy is a woman who has it in for them. I just like being around them, watching, soaking up the information, being cursed out. But um, wait, being cursed out, being put out." Why you like being cursed out and put out? Another publication uh, noted that Dream has, in quotes, most um, has mostly cast himself as a worshiper of women, a put them on a pedestal type, not usually a healthy attitude, but in the R&B landscape, he has stood out as a romantic. Dream has been married multiple times and has fathered nine children with four women. In 2010, while married to singer Christina Milian, pictures of Dream and his assistant having an affair in the Caribbean leaked online. Dream then filed his divorce from his then wife. All of nine days after, um, nine days before, Milian gave birth to the couple's daughter. Wow. Later, news stories reported that Milian's divorce settlement was contingent on Milian's agreement to never speak about their marriage. His chauvinism was further on display when he asked about his role as a when he was asked about his role as a parent to his daughter. In an interview with Essence magazine, when asked if he helped Million with the baby, he said the following and quote, I don't, because my helping out in quotes turns into expectations. I'll get violent on a late night, maybe one or two times, but after that, no. If Christina's tired, call the nanny, call Violet's granny, we got people. Wow. In 2013, he shared that he was writing a book about relationships despite his multiple divorces and was quoted saying, but why get married? What do they say? Get the milk without the cow. Such a statement cruelly refers to women as cattle and further suggests that Dream does not think romantic commitment is um, is worthwhile if sex, i.e. the milk, would be achieved without the commitment. The same year, a mere month after making this statement quoted above, Dream was arrested in California for a domestic violence incident with his girlfriend at the time who declined to press charges. Less than a year later, however, Dream was again arrested on charges of felony assault and strangulation. Now, remember, this woman alleged that she was strangled. He was arrested for strangulation. Dream again was arrested on charges of felony assault and strangulation, reckless endangerment, and child endangerment of his girlfriend, who was pregnant at the time. The criminal complaint alleged that Dream pulled and dragged his ex-girlfriend by her hair, choked her with a necklace she was wearing, kicked her, punched her in the head, and grabbed her by the neck, choking her again. 
His ex-girlfriend took photographs of the bruises Dream left on her. Those pictures showing bruises of her arms and scratches on her neck and wrists were publicly released by TMZ. Outrageously, Dream publicly insisted that his ex-girlfriend press charges to protect her immigration status. And ironically, Dream has quoted in the Rolling, um, in Rolling Stone as stating that no one, in quotes, takes the time to understand men or their psychological or the psychological impact on men with men. This is in quotes with men not being able to work as much as they did when I was small. Huh? It's not about equal or not. He went to ask. Uh, whoever thought that the weakest part of life would be masculinity. Like, what is he talking about? When plaintiff, when plaintiff was uh, first connected to Dream, she only knew of his reputation as a famous and accomplished songwriter. Because how would you know all of this? What? When plaintiff was first connected to Dream, she only knew of his reputation as a famous and accomplished songwriter and had not heard about the history of violence towards women. I didn't know all of this neither. Like, I didn't know, like, this is, this is awful. Those around Dream, however, and the business that supported his artistic endeavors, aka the music industry that is complicit and problematic. Um, those around Dream, who, um, however, the business that supported his artistic endeavors were aware of the violent misogynistic, um, misogynist that successful, um, that successful, that success hid his true, uh, self behind his songs, of female empowerment it's kind of like low-key gross that it's like this is how he treats women but he's also writing anthems for women uh maybe we should just get some women to write anthems for women you know what i'm saying but what do i know all right miss uh mangro is an extraordinary singer and songwriter and receives an o a 1B visa for her abilities in the arts. Ms. Mangrove was raised in the Netherlands with a passion, love, and extraordinary talent for writing and recording music. As a teenager, she began posting her songs on social media, developing a devoted following and catching the attention of several well-known producers around the world. In 2012, when Ms. Mangrove was just 21 years old, she signed a production deal with US-based production company Shapiro, Bernstein & Co, Inc. as a songwriter. As a result, she applied for a three-year O-1B visa for an uh, alien of extraordinary ability in the arts or extraordinary achievement in the motion picture or television industry. As then, um, as the then president of Shapiro, uh, Bernstein & Co. Inc. wrote in support of Miss Mangrove's O-1B visa application, um, She's an extraordinary artist who has established herself as, as one of the top singer-songwriters in Europe. At only 21 years old, um, Shani um, on, is on the short list of the music industry's most coveted artists, achieving outstanding success in, um, relative, in a relatively short period. She sought, she sought after by the top artists, the top recording artists, record labels, producers, and insiders in the business, and her collaborations read like a who's who in the music industry. In further support of Miss Mangrove, ab um, Miss Mangrove's application for the O-1B visa, the vice president of membership for the American Society of Composers, that's ASCAP, um, uh, they wrote that she's an extraordinary uh, talent in her native ho um, in her native Holland. She has earned a reputation as one of Europe's most compelling and creative singer songwriters. So this 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 woman is not just some you know like random girl that's like you know what this is some this is somebody that's at the top of her game in um, in Holland who is who is sought after and who is talented. Okay, she not just some, you know, like for for those that are like, well, what if she Tiffany, could you post the link to uh, for us to read the article? Um, I'm not reading the article. I'm actually reading um I'm actually reading the lawsuit. So you can find the lawsuit. So what I did was I started to make like an archive for these these music industry lawsuits. So you can go to the 100percenters.com, click on the Safe Music Business Initiative and click filed lawsuits and you'll you'll see it. You'll see it there. Um okay, so um 
Not surprisingly, uh, Ms. Mangro was awarded a three-year O-1B visa and began frequently working in the United States throughout 2012 to 2015 as a songwriter for Shapiro, Bernstein & Co. Throughout this time, Ms. Mangro continued to post her work on social media, including Instagram, which is how she was ultimately connected with The Dream. Okay? The Dream and his team make false promises to lure Ms. Mangro to Atlanta. In late 2014, Ms. Mangro was considering her options once her O-1B visa expired by 2015. She knew that she wanted to focus on her own recording career and as a result was speaking to several well-known producers about potential next steps and sponsorship of her visa renewal. It was around that same time in late 2014 that Dream's childhood friend and personal security detail, Chris Garland, and who they call in quotes Garland, reached out to Miss Mangro. Hold on. You know what? I think I'm going to put the um the link to this so that y'all can see this, the lawsuits. So that y'all can see it. Hold on. I'm going to pin it. Let me see. Let me send it to myself. Boom. Okay, hold on for one second. I'm going to pin it to the chunk so you can read it. Y'all can uh, read it if you want. Okay. Paste. Send. And then I'm going to pin this. Pin. Boom. Okay, so that's where y'all can go if you want to um, read this lawsuit or any other lawsuits. I mean, I don't have all of them. I'm just going through a, a process. But anyway, okay, so let me get back to this lawsuit. Okay. <sighs> okay, so it was around that same time in late 2014 that the Dream's childhood friend and personal security detail, Chris Garland, reached out to Miss Mangro via Instagram and asked her to send him music to share with Dream's manager, Merck. At the time, Dream and his creative partner, Christopher Tricky Stewart, have reached enormous success, including producing and or songwriting for Beyonce, Rihanna, Britney Spears, Mariah Carey, and Justin Bieber, producing five of his own studio albums and receiving several Grammy Award nominations and multiple wins. As a, success, as a successful performer, songwriter, and producer, Dream seemed like the perfect fit for Miss Mangro, who was an, uh, enormously talented in both performing and songwriting. Of course, of course. Why would you not want to work with the dream? How would you, and you wouldn't, how would you know that this is who you're, you're going in there to work? How would you know that this is how it's going to turn out? You don't, you, you don't, you don't. And it's so messed up. It's so messed up that they use the music industry and they use your dreams against you. They, they, and, and, and then, you know, people will ask, you know, ask people like me and people like this person, well, why did you, why did you get in the, why did you do this in the first place? Why did you pursue the career path you're in? Why am, why, why is it wrong to want to be a successful artist or songwriter? It's not. All right. Let me see. Ms. Graham, Ms. Man, uh, Mangro was thrilled at the opportunity to get her music in front of the dream and have the chance to work with someone who had significant connections and influence in the music industry. Of course she did. She therefore immediately sent Garland some of her music. Of course she did. Yo, I remember when I first started doing music and I, that was when MySpace was out. And I remember getting messages from like more prominent people in the industry. And you're like, oh shit. Of course you're excited. Oh my gosh, so-and-so responded to me or oh my gosh, so-and-so reached out to me. They saw my music or they saw my, like, come on. Um, okay, so Garland quickly responded to, um, responded that he, um, he would arrange a meeting between Miss Mangro and Merck. Miss Mangro happily said that she would meet with Dream and or his team. In January 2015, while Miss Mangro was alleged um, was already in Los Angeles, Merck reached out to Miss Mangro to arrange for her to fly to Atlanta to meet Dream. She arrived in Atlanta on January 29th, 2015, where Garland picked her up at the airport and told her that she would be meeting Dream at a club that evening because Dream wanted to observe how she, in quotes, handled herself in a club atmosphere. <sighs> right. 
red flag number who fucking knows several hours later miss mangrove met dream tricky and garland in front of gold room club miss mangrove did not have any significant interaction with dream while they were in the club but she was told to get into dream's car with him and garland at the end of the night while they drove miss mangrove back to her hotel dream discussed taking her to a basketball game the following day when miss mangrove attempted to turn the conversation to getting into the studio to record dream confirmed she would have the chance to record during the trip the next day on january 30th 2015 miss mangrove went into the studio to record with dream's sound engineer bart Shka, i don't know how to say i don't know how to say the name school 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 i don't know bart during the recording session miss mangrove recorded a verse for um the song transparent which was supposed to be a part of dream's forthcoming two-part ep crown jewel while the official release of crown jewel was delayed the song eventually leaked online dream failed to give any credit or compensation to miss mangrove for her vocals on the following day january 31st miss mangrove went back to the studio and recorded the song 187 which dream had written although miss mangrove had no gang affiliation or violent history she was presented with a song titled with the slang used for murder that evening dream arranged for miss mangrove to attend an atlanta hawks basketball game um, with bart providing her with courtside seats after the game dream and several others including tricky and garland took miss mangrove to a strip club at that point miss mangrove had not yet earned in quotes <clears throat> the right to have dreams phone number so arrangements were made through garland miss mangrove had never been to a strip club before <clears throat> Hold on, let me get some water. <clears throat> okay. Whew. Sorry if I'm reading a little fast because this is long, so I'm trying to like get through it. <clears throat> okay, so. Miss Mangrove had never been to a strip club before. <clears throat> While there, Dream repeatedly hand handed Miss Mangrove large stacks of cash and demanded that she throw the money at the strippers at one point one of the strippers came to the table completely naked and dream instructed the stripper to get on top of miss mangrove miss mangrove was visibly uncomfortable with the situation <clears throat> Dream seemed to enjoy how uncomfortable Miss Mangrove became. He laughed as Miss Mangrove asked the stripper to leave and perform for Dream instead. Dream insisted that the stripper, the stripper go back over to Miss Mangrove several times throughout the evening. The following day, on February 1st, 2015, <clears throat> Dream texted Miss Mangrove for the first time, an apparent sign that she passed the test, in quotes, the Dream <clears throat> had been giving her. After saying hello, the first thing Dream text Ms. Mangrove was, do you have a boyfriend? Boyfriends aren't allowed. It's a distraction. Okay. Ms. Mangrove was surprised to be asked such a personal question. That's what I was thinking. Like, what the fuck is that any of his business? We at work. If I have a man, I have a man. And he was married, I think, at this time. Like what? Um, okay, so he, wait, where is it at? Oh, they're a distraction. Ms. Mangrove was surprised to be asked such a personal question so early on in her communication with Dream, but she wanted to be cooperative and responded um, in the negative. As the end of her planned trip to Atlanta neared, Ms. Mangrove still was not given a recording contract or any indication that one would be forthcoming. But she remained optimistic because Dream and his team um, repeatedly expressed how impressed they were with her vocals and how much they liked her voice and her general style. Finally, finally, shortly before she was scheduled to leave, Dream told Miss uh, Mangro that he wanted to sign her to his label Contra Paris LLC. Um, in quotes, Contra. Miss Mangro was so happy and overwhelmed with gratitude. It truly felt like everything she had been working for was about to come to fruition. Dream told her that he would make her the next Beyonce and Rihanna. 
Miss Mangro explained in detail to Dream that her O-1 visa was set to expire in November of that year and that she needed a new um, petitioner to continue her visa for the following three years. She reiterated that she needed to know if she um, if he was serious about signing her and supporting her O-1 visa, because if not, she would need to search for another petitioner. Dream assured Miss Mangro that Contra would be her, um, her petitioner and that she did not need to look for a petitioner to continue her visa. He promised that she would receive an advance and a written contract soon. He then asked if she would go to Los Angeles with him for the next 10 days to continue recording. Miss Mangro agreed. Ms. Mangro, then just 23 years old and in an entirely new and enticing world, truly believed that all her dreams were about to come true. I just want to say, like, I remember those feelings. Like, when I first moved to L.A., when I first started doing music and, like, you know, getting around the industry for real and I saw how close I was to it, I really was like, you know, when you're green and you don't know and you're just getting there for the first time especially when you're around people who are super successful and have done your favorite songs and all of that it really is blinding and it's it's um it is you know it tricks you it's a very it's a very easy trick it's a very common trick like so unfortunately however she would soon learn that it was just the start of a long nightmare Dream uses success with Beyonce and Rihanna to manipulate and exploit Miss Mangro. Like this is this is why I'm reading this. Cause it just is like, these are two of the biggest artists in the world. This is one of the biggest songwriters in the world. And and this is what's happening at this high of a level. It just, it just is so, oh my God. From the moment Dream began texting Miss Mangro, he began um regaling regaling um her with stories about how he helped create beyonce and rihanna and would do the same for her as long as she did everything he told her to do dream told miss mangro that in order to write songs for her he needed to know everything about her including everything that embarrassed her upset her angered her and excited her every single thought she had are there any songwriters in here do we need to know those kind of things when we're about to write a song for our artist? Oh, this was wonder. That's bullshit. Dream told, um, okay, so he needs to know everything about her. Perhaps sensing that Miss Mangrove's hesitation um, uh, and confusion, Dream said that was how true songwriters and producers needed to operate in order to write the right song for each artist. He said Miss Mangro needed to belong in quotes to him so they could become the next B and J in reference to Beyonce and Jay-Z. Dream knew how much Miss Mangro loved and admired Beyonce as an artist. He regularly used Miss Mangro's admiration for Beyonce as a way to manipulate Miss Mangro, telling her that the only reason he achieved such uh, the only reason he achieved such great success with Beyonce is because they created a sanctuary in quotes together, which allowed him to know Beyonce in a way that others could not, and consequently he could write the best songs for her. Dream explained that a sanctuary, in quotes, was even stronger than a spousal connection because it was about, in quotes, art. This is that weird, dark part of the music industry, y'all. Like, this is some nasty, sick shit. This is... Mmm. <sighs> mmm. Mmm. Being part of a sanctuary with Dream meant that Miss Mangro was required to to disclose all of her secrets and thoughts, and become, in quotes, a trust a trust partners with him. What? He said that his relationship with Beyonce was so close that he knew about Beyonce's pregnancy before her husband, Jay-Z. For example, dream text Miss Mangro. Now, mind you, these are actual screenshots of the text message. I will, I'm gonna show y'all so y'all can see. Okay. Here's the screenshots of the text message. I will need I will need to know things you think are um are 
think or embarrassed about to further to a further extent i'm going to be your better half of this um better half if this goes where i think it's going mm. hmm. just lying just 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 completely lying oh wait hold on i'm trying to put my phone back in the thing just just dream reminded miss mangrove that she um that she better be in quotes grateful that he was working with her because he was putting um putting work on beyonce's album on hold and that if she wanted to reach the same level of success as beyonce she needed to become as close to or closer to him than beyonce the audacity of this man after like Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of our generation right so like you know and he's he's written some of her biggest songs and and to know that like he's using her name and his proximity to her to do something like this it just is so like man man i bet you he probably not gonna work with her no more this is a, it's a wrap because why is her name even all up and through this like dream what is happening allegedly okay he said that <clears throat> he said that meant miss mangrove could at um should ask and follow his advice on everything rely on him to be her main confidant and limit her inner so circle to only those people he approved and trusted somebody trying to call me hold on for a second sorry let me put it on do not disturb my bad job okay so okay Dream also told Miss Mangrove that if she acted right, that's in quotes, he would share the specific formula he used with Beyonce, and then Miss Mangrove and Beyonce would be the only two artists with the with those industry secrets. <laughs> Yo, these mo. <laughs> Dream routinely pointed out that he could make any new artist successful, but he was choosing Miss Mangrove, so he expected her to respect him correctly and that's in quotes dream frequently pitted rihanna against beyonce implying that rihanna was fighting for his attention and was frustrated that he was giving it to beyonce instead of her he said that rihanna was begging him for good records but because of his special sanctuary relationship with beyonce he saved them for beyonce and that miss mangrove could be a part of that as well this is so weird according to dream rihanna was possessive over him and got angry when he worked with Beyonce. In an apparent effort to reiterate how grateful Miss Mangrove could be for the opportunity to work with him, Dream told her that Rihanna would frequently send him flowers and other gifts. He reiterated that Rihanna had to work, in quotes, to make him give her hit records, and he was choosing to work with Miss Mangrove instead. In one of their earliest text exchange, Dream asked Miss Mangrove when she lost her virginity, explaining that Rihanna had told him this information about herself, insinuating that artists he worked closely with shared such intimate information with him. Dream led Miss Mangrove to believe through manipulation and coercion that if she allowed him to completely control every aspect of her life, they could create the ultimate sanctuary that would surpass anything he accomplished with Beyonce or Rihanna. Does this not sound like some like weird like what? Wait, what's wrong? Y'all said you gotta start the live over. Is it not working? What's up? Tell me what's going on. Is it working? Let me know. Exactly. Next level, next level and manipulation. R. Kelly shit. Cult leader. That's what I'm thinking. It sounds like a cult. It sounds like a cult. This is so weird. When Miss Mangrove questioned the idea. Oh, someone said it. It was pausing. It's normal now. Okay, cool. When Miss Mangrove questioned the idea of the sanctuary or asked Dream to clarify what he meant, she would receive evasive responses like the following. And this is a text message on a screenshot. I let you, I'll let you know after we win 10 Grammys together manipulation why would you not believe that you could win 10 grammys with somebody who's won eight 
who's 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 written the biggest songs in you know what right now you just have to be free and let me undress you emotionally so i can know what's underneath your heart this is called using your gifts for evil this shit is nasty for a new artist the thought of becoming the next beyonce or rihanna was obviously intoxicating obviously and Miss Mangrove was willing to work as hard as possible to make her recording dreams come true. Man, Dream, you should be ashamed of yourself doing this, man. This is messed up. Dream told Miss Mangrove that he was working on Beyonce's new tour and that everything, if everything went well, Miss Mangrove could open for her, but shared this promise only in the context of, of his emotional ma manipulation of her. Here goes a text. I think the more freedom you give me, the more relationships I will be able to put you through and in. I'm a straightforward person. Things like Beyonce's opening isn't a big deal to get it done. That's my family. Miss Mangrove had no reason to disbelieve what Dream was telling her at this time. He was successful, had made hit records with Beyonce and Rihanna, and convinced her that two of the most successful recording artists were dependent on him for their success. Dream regularly held his age and experience in the industry over Miss Mangrove, telling her that she simply did not understand how his methods were necessary to success and instilling in her that she should be grateful for his efforts to help her, placing himself on a pedestal and emphasizing that her success was only possible thanks to Dream. For example, he stated the following over text it means more to me than you than you can imagine my risk should tell you should tell you that in your mind you should know that i am risking something far greater than anyone ever has for um for and with you what are you risking what are you talking about and it's because i know it's beyond explanation you can't explain this so don't even try and don't mention it that's why the government denies things it isn't because it's not true it's because I lesser mind wouldn't even understand, so why stop it? Like it, it just is like a word. What is he even saying? It doesn't even make sense. It's because the lesser mind wouldn't even understand, so why stop the life they have and change, change what they love about their life? It's actually an unselfish thing to hold in truth. Like what is he even talking about? Okay, so Miss Mangrove was drawn into a whirlwind of lofty messages like this and was quickly convinced that she needed Dream to make it in the music industry and therefore was willing to take any and all direction from him. Only now does she see that Dream was using fraud and coercion to manipulate her into believing that she was being brought into a legitimate business arrangement, not a venture to use her for Dream's violent sexual desires. This is would you someone said a coke rant what <laughs> miss mangrove goes to los angeles to record her album and dream begins a horrific pattern of physical sexual and psychological manipulation and abuse under the guise of creating art in quotes on february 4th 2015 miss mangrove arrived in los angeles directly from atlanta soon after she arrived she began receiving messages from from dream that were extremely flirtatious including asking her if she wanted to lose her virginity again in quotes implying that he wanted to have sex with her that evening miss mangrove was in a studio which was in tricky stewart's home recording um recording music dream complained that miss mangrove needed to loosen up in quotes for the sake of the music and pressured her to drink alcohol and smoke marijuana in excessive quantities dream told her that re smokes as much um this is in quotes re smokes so much that while she's smoking one blunt jen and melissa already roll in the next one even though miss mangrove did not enjoy using drugs and alcohol she felt pressured to meet dream's expectations of a hit artist <sighs> throughout the evening while they were in the recording studio dream became more aggressive in pressuring miss mangrove to have sex with him he assured her that sex with him was in quotes part of the process and he could only write hit songs for her if she agreed to let him know everything about her In an effort to deter Dream, Miss Mangrove tried to argue that she did not want to do anything that could complicate making great music. In response, Dreams told, Dream told her that she agreed to be his trust partner and not listening to him and doing what he wanted was a sign of disrespect. 
Ms. Mangro, who was alone in the United States and increasingly confused and frightened about the situation she was in, tried to protest again. Dream reiterated to Ms. Mangro that she was part of something special, that he let her into his sanctuary because she was so talented and that she was a part of something bigger than anything she could understand. In the studio, Dream began to touch Ms. Mangro and she, and she pulled back, suggesting that it was not a good idea to be flirtatious um, with, um, with others around. Dream proceeded to take Miss Mangro through the house where the studio was located, eventually bringing her to a pitch black bedroom. Upon arriving in the black bedroom, Miss Mangro had no doubt about what Dream's intentions were. She told Dream, I don't know about this and I don't want to ruin this. Dream responded by telling her that this was really important and that they did not have time to waste, in quotes. He insisted that, that this will only make the records much better. Oh my God, oh. I'm so sick of this trifling ass industry. I'm so sick of y'all. Not y'all, but y'all. I'm sick of y'all. That's why I keep showing up. Cause I'm fucking sick of y'all. Mm. How many pages of the lawsuit? 60, it's long. We like halfway there. Upon arriving in a dark room, Ms. Mangro had no doubt about what Dream's intentions were. She told him, okay, wait, sorry, I read that part. Dream then grabbed Ms. Mangro's hand and placed them on his genitals. He then quickly escalated, pushing her down on the bed and inserting um, his penis into her. Others in the studio began to look for Dream and Ms. Mangro causing Dream to leave the bedroom to go back to the recording studio. When he did so, he locked the bedroom door with, Man with Ms. Mangro inside naked in the dark. After some amount of time, Dream returned to the bedroom and again had sex with Ms. Mangro. He did this repeatedly for several hours, leaving Ms. Mangro tired and confused. During this ordeal, Dream told her that, and quote, this was going to be great for Ms. Mangro and also demanded that Ms. Mangro tell Dream that she loved him. Now, she just met this man and she's trying to do music. She did not come here to have sex with the dream. That's not what she came here for. What? Hmm. When Dream finally let Miss Mangro leave the bedroom, it was around 6 a.m. The sun had risen and most of the people from the studio had left. Tricky, however, did see her and Dream leave the bedroom at that hour. She returned to her hotel confused, but tried to remain grateful and hopeful for what she believed was her big break. Man. Oh, given Dream's pressure and insistence, Miss Mangro felt it was useless to continue protesting. Instead, she tried to convince herself that it was a consensual sexual interaction. It was easier to believe that believe what Dream was saying than to face the reality of the situation that a famous and significantly older music producer was using his influence and power to make a young woman on her own in a foreign country have sex with him. Dream let her text later text Ms. Mangro and acknowledged that he pressured her into having sex with him. In a particular text, um, in particular, he text. Entering you is like walking through a door of roses. Sure, there are thorns, but isn't it beautiful? Diamonds can't be made without pressure. Nothing great can. On February 7th, 2015, Dream Text Miss Mangro, we are married through art. Oh my God. Oh. I saw somebody say something about like sex spells. Like that's definitely what this is giving me. Um, we are married through art and I won't ever let anyone take advantage of you and will, um, and will protect you to the end like a knight. Unfortunately, it was Dream who Miss Mangro needed protection from. Exactly. And there were no night, there was no night willing to help her when she needed it the most. Throughout her time in Los Angeles, if Miss Mangro and Dream were in the studio at the same time, he expected her to be available to have sex with him whenever he demanded it. Dream refused to use any protection. While she was in Los Angeles, Miss Mangro became sick with strep throat and was given antibiotics to treat it. She knew that antibiotics could lessen the effectiveness of birth control and begged Dream not to 
ejaculate inside of her. He refused. At one point while they were in Los Angeles, Miss Mangrove physically tried to get away from him to avoid him ejaculating inside of her. And Dream held her arms down and ejaculated inside of her over her protest. This type of violent sex control and manipulation became more and more common as the days passed. On or around February 13th, 2015, Dream sent Miss Mangrove sexually explicit texts, including one that said, I want to fuck your bladder so hard that it made you piss all over me. In between sending those text messages, Dream texts Miss Mangrove about the recording deals he was working on for her, including... We will have major distribution in about 30 days, so you better be ready. Dream frequently used this type of manipulation where he intertwined business promises with violent sex. On February 14, 2015, Dream texted Miss Mangrove that she, uh, in quotes, must care about what he cares about and said, your life um, is now, wait, your life is now, you have way more room, but I will care about those things in your life like they are my own. Your mother is my mother. Your father, your brother, your friends are mine. Your enemies, I will inherit as my enemies. When Miss Mangrove said she did not understand, Dream responded, this is that other shit, blood in, blood out. The following day, Dream left Los Angeles for work obligations and gave Miss Mangrove permission to go home to Amsterdam as long as she moved to Atlanta within four days. Miss Mangrove was in a precarious state um, at the end of her Los Angeles trip. From a professional standpoint, Miss Mangrove felt incredibly excited about the work she had done and could really see her visions of becoming a recording artist come true. However, she also felt increasingly confused with and fearful of Dream. He was volatile and quick to anger if she did not quickly comply with his demands, yet in such a short period of time, he also told her that he loved her would protect her and cared more about her than anyone else in the world. It was dizzying. That's exactly what that is. Which was precisely Dream's intent and his campaign of psychological and physical manipulation. Goodness, this is a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. It's a whole lot. Like. Dream convinces Miss Man um, Mangrove to move to Atlanta where Dream's manipulation and abuse escalates. In order to convince Miss Mangrove to move to Atlanta, Dream promised that the contract was forthcoming, that he would find her an apartment to live in, and that he would pay her expenses in Atlanta until she received her advance. As a result, Miss Mangrove flew to Amsterdam on February 17, 2015 to pack all of her belongings and prepare to move to Atlanta. Ooh, he ain't shit. He uprooted, he made her move somewhere else. On the day before she left Los Angeles from, um, for Amsterdam, Dream text Miss Mangrove, hopefully we will have a deal memo in place before you come back to confirm that was the plan. So like, he just is like continuing to just rope her in and making her believe like, yeah, I'm gonna sign a deal, I'm gonna sign a deal, I'm gonna sign a deal. And also this is happening, this is not even a lot of time this is happening like oh my gosh um on the same day during a text conversation with miss mangrove dream text that i will not let anyone disrespect you this contract will be fair and respectful from my end and i'm going to pay you your advance out of pocket fyi i also um i also other than trick <clears throat> and mark would love to be involved in your management process so he was trying to involve her in everything I mean, he was trying to involve himself in every part of her her career. <clears throat> Before Ms. Mangrove could even respond, Dreams promised um, Dreams promised that her contract deal would be fair and respectful. Dreams said, "I need to." He said. Mm. Before Ms. Mangrove could even respond, so he just respond. Let me go back up because th this is crazy. On the same day during a text conversation with Miss Mangro, Dream text, I will not let anyone disrespect you. This contract will be fair and respectful from my end. I'm going to pay you in advance out of my pocket, FYI. 
I also, other than Trick and Mark, would like would love to be involved in your management process. So that's what he says, right? And then right after that, it says before Miss um, Man uh, Mangrove could even respond to Dream's promise that her contract deal would be fair and respectful, Dream said, "I need to see the inside of that pussy, though. As your man, now go in the restroom, pull your panties to the side, and take a pic." I'm going to read the footnote. The footnote says, it is unlikely coincidence that Panties to the Side, that's the name of a song, is the, is the name of a song written and sung by Dream. In an interview with Essence Magazine, he said the following about the track. It's about a quickie when you can't really get into it um, all the way and you can't take the panties all the way off. So you just push them to the side. Sometimes you do it just because it's hot. You have no reason not to take your clothes off, but you just keep them on. Everyone at Essence.com should try it. Call your man at work and tell him, I want you to come home and pull my panties to the side. Because Miss Mangrove is also a songwriter, she asked Dream whether the contract would include a publishing deal as well. In response, Dream said he would love, in quotes, um, love to do all of her, all do all of her stuff. So he wanted to be her manager, her record label, her publisher her her um like this is this is insane in response dream said he would he would love to do all of her stuff and that he had already told big john uh john platt the then chairman and ceo of warner chapel music once uh miss mangro was finished with uh with label he will get with him to get her a pub deal in place dream then told miss mangro to have her attorney the like, I just want to say the fact that, like, the, the the caliber and level of names being pulled into this and the level and caliber of names that are being used to manipulate this woman is like, it's like pissing me off. It's like really pissing me off. Oh, my God. <sighs> Fuck everybody that does this kind of shit. Fuck y'all. Mm. Sorry, seeing Big John's name in there trigger me because obviously it's one of my mentors, somebody that some somebody that um that I um I look up to in the business. And so to see him using John's name in here to manipulate this woman, it just is so whack. It's so fucking whack. Dream then told Miss Mangro to have her attorney put in any and all contracts that her option is always to go with him if there ever is a departure of um, Dream and Trick working together. This is what's referred to as a key man clause. While Miss Mangro was in Amsterdam, Dream texted her in um, Tr Dream texted her incessantly asking whether she was behaving she um where she was and what she was doing on february 18 2025, uh, 2015 dream told miss mangrove via text that rihanna had just sent him a sexual text a not so subtle hint to remind miss mangrove to be grateful for him because rihanna was allegedly interested in him Right. On February 19, 2015, Dream text Miss Mangrove, you belong to me now. I'm your mother and your father and everything. Ew. If you're her mother and your father, why are you having sex with her? It's weird. What? When Miss Mangrove arrived in Atlanta in February on February 21st, 2015 
Garland picked her up from the airport with a gun sitting between them in the SUV. He told Ms. Mangro that she needed his protection because Atlanta was a, quote, crazy place. She discovered later that Garland was often carrying Dream's gun because Dream had a pending domestic violence charge and was not permitted to have weapons. Ms. Mangro was put in an isolated residence inn, which was not within walking distance of anything. This is why, this is why, this is... All of this movement is trafficking. That's why one of the things that she's suing for is sex trafficking. This is trafficking. I'm flying you here. I'm taking you from Atlanta to, 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 to LA. I'm putting you in this hotel. I'm moving you here. I'm moving you there. What? <sighs> okay, where did I leave off? Ms. Mangrove was put on in an isolated residence in which was not within walking distance of anything. It did, however, allow Dream to come and go. Um, hold on, I'm gonna read this footnote about um, this assault charge that the Dream had. Dream's ex-girlfriend, um, Lydia Nam, filed a, a police report in November 2013 alleging that Dream strangled and physically assaulted her while she was pregnant in April 2013. The case was dismissed in March of 2015. Presumably, Dream was not permitted to carry weapons while the case was pending. So she's saying when she got in the car, her his his boy carried his gun because he couldn't, he wasn't allowed to have a gun because of this case. Um. Oh my God, like what the hell? Okay. Um, okay, so let Dream come and go as he pleased without det um, detection. Dream had his own key to Miss Mangrove's room and reminded her that he could stop by at any time. And he frequently did enter her hotel room with little or no notice. Miss Mangrove could not drive and was relying on Dream for money for all her expenses because she had not yet received her contract in advance, was essentially trapped in the residence inn until Garland took her somewhere. While she occasionally used Uber, Garland reiterated that it was a safety concern and that Dream expected him to transport her. Is the details for me, right? The details are insane. That's why I wanted to read it because the thing is, it's like we be seeing these headlines and you just see a few things and you don't actually like get into the full, like the full story. So I want, I want the people who want to know, who want to know about the full lawsuit and don't feel like reading it or whatever. I just wanted to read this one for y'all. Cause this is, 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 it's insane. Like it's fucking insane. Um, okay. So Dream became increasingly controlling after Ms. Mangro moved to Atlanta. He told Ms. Mangro that she needed to check in with him every day. She needed to be available for him whenever he called and that she she um, should depend only on him for anything she needed. Ms. Mangro was no longer allowed to attend events or go to clubs with, with Dream. She was expected to stay in her hotel unless she was recording or at the gym. Garland regularly texted her to ask what she was eating and telling her to go to the gym while making unannounced visits to check on her in quotes dream forced miss mangrove to change her social media handles to include references to contra paris and regularly demanded that she remove certain posts from her social media thereby further isolating her from the outside world miss mangrove had to beg to go to the studio she was never given a schedule instead she was just expected to be prepared to go somewhere um whenever she was called when she asked Dream if she would go, so he just got her in this random hotel by herself with no, no money, no access to nobody, has her isolated. She can't drive. Like, what in the hell are y'all doing? This is fucked up. When she asked Dream if she could go to the studio, he would chastise her and call her a brat. He, she's a singer. She's here because she's an artist. But she's a brat because she want to work. What? He would tell her that she had to stop thinking about only herself. That he was an important producer who was working with a lot of important people. And that he did not have time for her, in quotes, nagging about getting into the studio. It was not at all about Miss Mangro 
ex um, what uh, Miss Mangro expected after being in the studio nonstop during her first visit to Atlanta in Los Angeles. Everything felt different once she committed to living in Atlanta and was under Dream's complete control. In between berating Miss Mangro, Dream continued coming to her hotel or meeting her in the studio wherever she, um, wherever he wanted to demand sex. He also began doing walkthroughs and uh, quote walkthroughs of her hotel room to look through all of Miss Mangro's belongings, including her medication. He got angry when he discovered that Miss Mangro was taking birth control pills and demanded that she throw them away. According to Dream, it was a sign of disrespect to try to prevent a pregnancy by him. Miss Mangro, I really hope I'm saying her last name. Miss uh right, Miss Mangro, who had no desire to be pregnant at the time, began hiding her birth control pills under her mattress. Not surprisingly, Ms. Mangro had a pregnancy scare shortly after she arrived to, to live in Atlanta. Dream sent Garland to buy a pregnancy test. And when it came back negative, Ms. Mangro let Dream know via text. He immediately called Ms. Mangro and screamed at her for almost an hour because he said it was an insult to him that she was happy that she wasn't pregnant. In, every, um, in the very early morning of February 25th, 2015, while at Triangle Sound Studio, Dream plied Miss Mangro with alcohol and marijuana and forced her to have sex with him while he recorded it. Miss Mangro, who was highly intoxicated, tried to stop Dream from recording, but he refused. The next day, Garland told Miss Mangro that for a skinny girl, she had nice curvy thighs. It was the first time Garland had ever made a comment about her body. While she had no way of knowing whether that was a coincidence, it certainly seemed designed to send a message that Dream shared the unconsented um, to sex tape. She was humiliated. Dream would later regularly use the recording to threaten Miss Mangro um, that he could share it with anyone he wanted. Dream insisted that Miss Mangro tell him that she loved him. She regularly had to send him messages expressing how grateful and thankful she was for him in order to avoid being screamed at for being a brat. She was also expected to regularly buy him flowers to express her gratitude. Dream began having Garland call Miss Mangro at all hours of the day or night to ensure she was in her hotel room. If Miss Mangro was sleeping or unavailable for any reason, Dream would be infuriated. Dream and Garland also began monitoring the food that Ms. Mangro ate and how often she would uh, work out because Dream thought she had gotten too thin and wanted her to be curvier, specifically suggesting that she could change her uh, she could change her body in anticipation for the Beyonce tour that would be able to open. Uh, she would be able to open for Miss Mangro was often very hungry because Garland monitored what what she ate. If she mentioned something she ate, Dream would tell her that she would need to work out extra hard the next day. So they're like starving her? Like what? Miss Mangro considered Garland to be something of a confidant when she arrived in Atlanta. She often asked how she was, um, he, he often asked how she was doing and was initially very kind to her. However, if she complained that she had not been to the studio for a few days, or that she was stuck in her hotel room for several days in a row, Garland would tell her that all she needed to worry about was keeping Dream happy. As he explained in, a, um, in some in some and substance, if Dream, this is in quotes, if Dream says something is vanilla, even if you see and know it's chocolate, if Dream tells you it's vanilla, it's vanilla. These people are crazy. Garland casually made statements that he would kill anyone who had any issue with Dream. Given that he regularly displayed his guns, Ms. Mangro took his statement as a veiled threat. Ms. Mangro continued to ask when she would be allowed back in the studio to record, but Dream continued to push it off. She also asked if she could start writing songs given that Dream said her deal would include a publishing songwriting co um, component, but she was not permitted to write anything. Dream considered it an insult that she asked and accused her of insulting his songwriting.
Oh my God. Miss Mangrove continued asking about her contract. On February 28th, 2015, Dream said that her contract would be finished soon and again ordered Miss Mangrove to ensure that her attorney ins inserted a key man clause into her contract with Contra Paris. As Dream wrote in an email to Miss Mangrove, basically no matter no matter terms or partners, ultimately you choose to exit binding participants in contract other than Dream. If Dream goes, you go, still remaining bonded to dream for the remaining term of the contract, if any. With little to no autonomy or freedom, Miss Mangrove continued to tell Dream what he wanted to hear, that she was loyal to him, that she wanted the key man clause, and that she loved him. During the second week of March 2015, after a few weeks in the residence inn, he's had her in the residence inn for a few weeks. What is going on? During the second week, Okay, so Ms. Mango discovered bed bugs in her room and asked Garland to place her in a new room. Yuck. For reasons known only to Dream, Ms. Mango requested, um, Mango's request infuriated him. He screamed that she was trying to take advantage of him, that she was not loyal, and that she was a brat. Ms. Mango tried to desperately explain herself, but Dream's anger continued to escalate. He told her that it was her fault that Beyonce's album was delayed. What? He told her that it was her fault that Beyonce's album was delayed and ha and he had the right to tell her what to do to him sexually to make it up make it up to him. He demanded that Miss Mangro's uh, Mangro apologize to him for the delays to Beyonce's album while he forced her to perform sexually um sexually by commanding oral sex. Dream roughly shoved his penis inside Miss Mangro's mouth until she was choking. When she attempted to signal with her hands um, that she was choking. He said that he was her boss and continued forcing himself inside of her. Eventually, Dream began Dream began to choke Miss Mangro with both of his hands. As she began to pass out, Dream continued to scream that she was taking advantage of him. My God. Dream stormed out and left Miss Mangro in shock with several bruises on her neck. Fortunately, she knew that Dream was leaving town shortly so she would have a few days to recover. Dream never apologized or mentioned the strangling incident again. And unfortunately, it would not be the last time he became physically abusive with Miss Mangro. On or around March 14, 2015, Dream left Atlanta to handle work obligations elsewhere. Miss Mangro wished him a safe flight before he took off. But when she did not text him the following day, Dream texted her, you know damn well you need to check in. During the next few days, Miss Mangro made sure to say hello or good morning. When she missed one day or, or around March 21st, 2015, Dream texted her, you're not checking in. Miss Mangro responded that she had checked in with Garland every day as she was required to. On the following day, Dream texted Miss Mangro to say, my international wife, I think it's time for me to hit that pussy. When you are having my, um, when are you having my baby, 2023? When Miss Mangro did not immediately respond, Dream text, you're ignoring me now? This is just gross, man. This is gross. This shit is crazy. You're Yes, this shit is insane. That's why I wanted to read it. Because it just was like, you can't make this shit up. So let me just read it to y'all. Miss Mangro immediately responded in fear. No, I'm not ignoring you. I'm studying. Dream then threatened Miss Mangro that he was going to drive over to where she was and said he was on the way. Even though Miss Mangro later learned he was not even in the state at the time. When Miss Mangro did not respond quickly enough, Dream text, this is definitely ignoring. You better not be cheating on me. As soon as Miss Mangro saw her, her messages, she told Dream that her phone was on silent to try to placate his escalating anger. Ms. Um, when Dream returned from his trip, Miss Mangro tried to focus on recording and staying focused on her goals while keeping Dream as calm as possible. On the rare quick occasion that Miss Mangro was allowed to go into the studio, Garland said that Dream told him to make sure she was, in quotes, liquored up before getting in there. <sighs> How long is Cassie's lawsuit? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, this, this lawsuit is long. It is. It's long. 
Um, these lawsuits are long. But, I mean, listen, you got to ex completely explain it. You know what I mean? Okay. If Dream was at the studio when Miss Mangrove arrived, he would check to make sure she was intoxicated. And if he did not think she was drunk enough, he would forcibly pull her hair back and force her to drink more alcohol. If Miss Mangrove wore her hair in a ponytail, Dream would roughly yank her head back and pull out her hair tie. Miss Mangro had become so isolated and dependent on Dream for food and shelter in such a short period of time that it became increasingly difficult for her to comprehend the reality of her situation. Miss Mangro is signed to Contra Paris and Epic Records. So he actually ends up signing her. This is crazy. In or around March 20, uh, 2015, Dream told Miss Mangro that Antonio L.A. Reed reached out to him about signing her to Epic Records. Dream said that he would handle all the negotiations with Epic. Of course he would. He would, he would handle all the negotiations with Epic, refusing to include Miss Mangro and insisting that any questions she asked him to get a better understanding of her situation was disrespectful. Sound familiar? It sounds familiar to me. Mm -hmm. At or around the same time, Ms. Mangro was staying at a new hotel that provided a driver who would take guests to destinations with short distances. This was the first time Ms. Mangro had any freedom to control when and where she could eat. She often asked the driver to take her to get food and got to know him a bit. After several weeks, the driver expressed concern for Ms. Mangro because... As he said, she always was alone. She never left the hotel except to get food and she did not appear well. It was the first time that Miss Mangro had any real contact with anyone other than Dream and the people he surrounded himself with. She felt embarrassed and ashamed that the driver could tell something was wrong. Miss Mangro uh, knew that her physical and mental state was deteriorating and was trying to figure out a way to go back home until she had her recording contract in place that she believed could protect her from Dream's control and abuse, especially given that most of her time was spent alone just waiting for Dream or someone from his team to tell her she needed to be in a studio. Dream, who was married, he was married this whole time. Like, how do, how do, how? Dream, who was married, had a child on the way in May of 2015. So he was more distracted than usual. Miss Mangro used that time to ask if she could leave for a few days to visit her mother. Dream told her that she could only go home if she left all of her belongings with Garland. Perhaps sensing Miss Mangrove's newfound realization of the abusive situation she was in, Dream's sexual assault intensified. On one occasion, Dream told Miss Mangrove that he wanted to take her to a movie. When they arrived, there was another man in the theater who did um, who they did not know. Dream demanded that Miss Mangro perform oral sex on him while the man watched. She said no. Dream got angry and forced Miss Mangro to have sex with him in the theater while the man presumably watched. It was a physically painful encounter. On the same evening, Dream took Miss Mangro to the parking lot of the Triangle Sound Studio in in his sprinter van the same evening in his sprinter van which had been remodeled as a tour van with a mattress in the back once they arrived at the gated lot dream told miss mangro that they were not wait that they were not actually going to the studio, but instead he asked her to leave and enter the van because a, um, from a separate entrance at a different time than, than he did, seemingly in an attempt to keep his plans a secret from others present at the studio. Once in the van, Dream locked the doors and pushed Miss Mangro into the dark back area of the van. He pinned her on the mattress in the van, took off her clothes, and started forcibly having sex with her. He pressed his full body weight on Miss Mangro while covering her mouth and nose with his hands so that she was unable to breathe. He told her that he was angry, that he want that she wanted to go home and screamed at her that she was difficult and ungrateful as he forced himself on her.
Dream then began to choke Miss Mangrove, demanding that she tell her, are you mine? And instructing her to say, you're mine. His aggression scared Miss Mangrove and the choking became so intense that she believed she might have lost consciousness at one point during the ordeal. He told Miss Mangrove that she better remember who she belongs to while she was gone, demanded that she tell him that she loved him and further told her, how are you going to tell, demand somebody to tell you that you love them while you're also choking them and cutting off their air supply, closing their nose and their mouth. Have you seen that? I've seen that like movies and shit like that. Mm. Mm. Does this man have daughters? Mm. If he does, my God, man. His aggression scared Miss Mangrove and the choking became so intense that she believed she might have lost consciousness at one point. He told Miss Mangrove that she was, okay, remember that you're mine. Um, you better remember who you belong to while, uh, while she's gone. Demanded that she tell him that she loves him and further told her that he knows everything about her and is the foundation of her career and of her um, record project. Once he finished, he instructed Garland to come to the parking lot and take Miss Mangrove back to her hotel. Miss Mangrove had bruises across her neck from dream strangulation. Garland, did you know this was what he was doing? To did you know anything about this? Miss Mangrove left um, left for Amsterdam with one bag, with one small bag, on or around April seventh, two thousand fifteen. At that time. Dream instructed Ms. Mangro that she could only be in Amsterdam for a few weeks as the recording contract and distribution deal were finalized and executed. In or around April 11, 2015, Ms. Mangro texted Dream about a Billboard magazine interview he did that had just been published. He previously told her that he was going to discuss her, discuss her as one of his new artists in the interview. She never came up in the interview, so he so she texted Dream to ask why she was not mentioned. It was an innocent inquiry, but caused Dream to fly into rage. He sent several pages of text messages in response saying, and this is text messages. It wasn't about you. It was about me. Don't patronize me. You know, I'm smarter, um, smarter than that. Stop being so selfish. Don't ever call me about something. So, um, so minute again, please. You treat me like I'm some side bitch or something. Oh, wait, is this what she's saying? Oh, wait, wait, you treat me like some side bitch or something as if I'm not important just because I made you important. I'm giving up. I'll let you, everyone know where we stand. What? That's what he said? Miss Mangrove, who was just excited about the possibility of being mentioned in this article, was completely taken aback by his reaction because he was becoming more and more unpredictable. She realized that anything she asked him had the potential to make him angry and that she had no way of knowing what would or would not cause such an explosive reaction. She was very thankful to be having the conversation via text instead of in person. Dream refused to speak to Miss Mangrove for several days and she was left completely in the dark about whether he was planning to move forward with, with her record. Garland then texts Miss Mangrove to say that he had spoken to Dream. He told Told her that she needed to play her role, show she was humble, show her passion and loyalty, and provide a gift to Dream as a peace offering. Garland suggested a customized Contra Paris clothing to prove to Dream that she was committed. Dream eventually responded to Miss Mangro. She was forced to reiterate how grateful she was for him, um, tell him that he meant everything to her. Um, and so forth. She continued texting Dream good morning to ensure she was checking in as he ordered. On or around April 16, 2015, Dream texts Miss Mangrove to say that Reed and Epic Records were going to be their partner on the record deal. This especially meant that once she signed a recording contract with Contra, she would sign a distribution contract with Epic. 
Once both of the contracts were signed, Miss Mangro's album could be finalized and released. On April 21st, 2015, while Miss Mangro was still in Amsterdam, she finally signed the contra the contra contract. The contra contract was a recording and shopping contract that provided contra with the exclusive rights to all audio and audio visual recordings, in addition to a six month time period to enter into a substantially um, uh, enter into or substantially negotiate a distribution agreement. So she didn't sign to Epic initially, I guess. The Contra contract specifically noted that Dream was an agent of Contra and upon information and belief, he was also the principal of the LLC. On May 1st, 2015, Miss Mangro, okay, so this one she signed to Epic. Miss Mangro then signed the Epic contract. On the same day, Dream text Miss Mangro, in quotes, it will always be mine, not just your pussy, all you, all of you, your blood, what? He said, it will always be mine, not just your pussy, all of you, your blood, your mind, your heart. It's fucking creepy. Dream maintained complete control over communications concerning Miss Mangro's deal with Epic. He refused to connect her to anyone directly or even to include her in emails or text chains with the excess um, with the executives from the major record label she has she was now signed to. Miss Mangro meets, rep meets representatives from Epic and Dream becomes jealous, possessive, and violent. Miss Mangro had a return ticket back, um, return ticket booked to Atlanta for May 12, 2015. She texts Dream to confirm that he wanted her to return on that date. But given that his son was born just a few days earlier, he doing all of this while his kid is also just born. Ugh, oh my goodness. Um, okay, so return day, someone's summer, born. He told Miss Mango that he would let her know when to return to Atlanta. Finally, in late May 2015, Miss Mango was told that Reed and Joey are are Arbagi, I don't know how to say his name, former executive vice president of a at Epic Records wanted to meet her in person. She returned to Atlanta on or around May 26, 2015 to prepare. Dream told her to practice three specific records for the meeting, Married to the Game, 187, and Road. However, when they got to the studio with Reed, Dream began playing a fourth song, Cream, one that Dream specifically refused to send to, to her to allow her to practice in an effort to embarrass and sabotage her in front of Reed. After Miss Mangro performed, Dream turned his chair toward her and placed his hand on her on her bare inner thigh and stroked her leg in front of Reed and Joey while the group spoke about her performance. It was humiliating for Miss Mangro and served only to assert Dream's dominance over her. Ugh. During the group conversation, Reed said Reed said that he liked her in quotes. He liked her sexy. Miss Mangro was um which infuriated Dream. After Reed and Joey left the studio, Dream mentioned Reed's comment and, force, and forcefully had sex with Ma with Ms. Mangro in the vocal booth while Garland guarded the studio door. It was so rough and painful that Ms. Mangro began to bleed vaginally. <sighs> Ms. Mangro did not want to have sex with Dream at the time and certainly did not consent to the physically to the physically violent and forced uh, the physical violence and force he used during the encounter. During the trip to Atlanta, Miss Mangro celebrated her 24th birthday. And she posted a selfie to her social media to celebrate the occasion. Dream immediately texted her to delete it. She quickly complied. Dream replied, you can't keep doing and undoing. If you don't get it, just say you don't and we can move. We can move on. I got my own shit to worry about. It was yet another not so subtle threat that if Ms. Mangro did not do exactly as she was told, Dream could destroy her career. Ms. Mangro flew back to Amsterdam on or around May 29th, 2015 to await further details about the next steps. On or around May 19th, 2015, Epic wired Ms. Mangro $35,000 a $35,000 advance. It was only then that Ms. Mangro was provided with any compensation for the work she had been doing for Dream since January. Ms. Mangro was told that Dream and Tricky both received $150,000 upon the, the execution of the contract. So they got $150,000 and she got... 35,000. 
Miss Mangrove re remained extremely confused about the next steps, but remained af but became afraid to ask Dream any scheduling questions because he took that as a sign of disrespect. Could you imagine? Hey, what time? Sh what time do you need me there? That's taken as a sign of disrespect. What time you need me to pull up? You're mad? Come on, bro. What? She reached out to sound engineer, um, Scott, I don't know how to say his name, to ask if he knew anything about the schedule. She told him that Dream told her they were going to finish recording the album in Las Vegas, but that she was not given any time frame despite trying to figure it out. The engineer confirmed that Dream said the same thing to him and then said, in quotes, but not allowed to ask, um, but not allowed to ask, right? That's what he had said to me too. Vegas, wonder when, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. So he, I guess he's telling the engineer, the engineer not allowed to ask when either. Could you imagine working for somebody and you're not allowed to ask when you need to be to work or is considered disrespectful? Like this be that shit, this be that, oh, this shit. What is wrong with the music industry? And not even just the music industry, what is wrong with people that gain power? Why does gaining power make you think that you get to just treat people however? This is some weird shit. Who the fuck taught y'all this? Like, ooh, the things I be thinking and don't be saying. Oof. All right. Miss Mangrove also started asking Dream more questions about Beyonce's tour because he continued to regularly tell her that she was prepping for it. Dream played Miss Mangrove a song he wrote for Beyonce that featured Jay-Z. He told Miss Mangrove that he was not allowed to play the song for anyone, but he allowed her to hear it to get her excited for the tour. Weeks later, Miss Mangrove mentioned to the engineer that Dream played her a new Beyonce song. She was excited about hearing it and asked the engineer not to tell Dream she told him that she heard it. However, um, to her shock, the engineer told Miss Mangro that it was an old record that had um, they had cut and that it ultimately did not make Beyonce's previous album. It was not part of a new album or tour. In fact, as it turned out, Beyonce was not preparing for a tour at all. Miss Mangro started to realize that the dizzying whirlwind Dream had led her through was a mirage and started to fear that Dream never truly wanted to produce her record, but just wanted to control her physically and mentally. In mid-June 2015, Miss Mangrove asked Dream when she could come back to start working again. She said, you do know you need to, she said, you do know you need to approve if I want to go out there. You're the one that controls my budget. Also, I can't be there this weekend, so it's up to you. After Dream responded that he thought Miss Mangrove was flying herself to Atlanta, i.e. using her own money instead of the money in her epic budget, Miss Mangrove said she could, um, Miss Mangrove said she could do that, but she thought Dream wanted her to stay there, which she could not afford to do on her own. Dream then told her that he did not want to burn out he did not want to burn out her budget. We're planning on finishing this record in Vegas. As a result, uh, Ms. Mangro was forced to continue waiting for Dream to provide permission to use her budget for traveling and living expenses or to go back into the studio. To so it's like she did a record deal and she wasn't even able to use it. How do these record companies, like this is, this is like, cause these record companies continue to get named in these lawsuits and get caught up in all of this shit, you know? And it just, I, I just really wonder like what their position is on this shit. Like, how do you explain this? Because everybody can't be lying. There can't be, and, and I think the worst part is when you think about all these kind of lawsuits, cause this lawsuit was filed under, I think this was the, I don't know if it was gender motivated violence or if it was the cover up act in California. I think it's the cover up act in California. But thanks to gender voted, um, gender motivated violence, the Adult Survivors Act, the Cover Up Act um, in California, that's why this flurry of lawsuits is coming in because the statute of limitations has been lifted. That's what this is. But it's crazy as the lawsuits flurry in to see who is being sued. Who? CEOs, presidents, superstars. It's people at the top. <sighs> All right. Throughout July, Miss Mangrove continued to wait. She was fearful of asking too many questions. Wait, wait. 
Okay. Um, too many questions because of the way Dream reacted. However, Dream also became angry and called her dis her disinterested if she was not regularly keeping in touch. It was an impossible balance. In mid-July, Dream reached out to Miss Mangrove to say he was planning her first showcase for the label in August and was working on the radio edit for Married to the Game. Miss Mangrove said she was looking forward to the details later that same day. Dream text, I need you. I need to fuck you now. So it was like every single time he would tell her, yeah, I'm about to do this with your record. He will also come at her like this. The following day when Miss Mangro did not immediately respond to the text message, Dream text her. Um, he said, you better not be fucking cheating. Where the fuck you at? In late July, Dream began pressuring Miss Mangro to hire Cynthia Camp Campbell, an assistant who Dream personally knew but who had little experience with musicians and to pay her $15,000 for the first three months. He also told Miss Mangro to move in with Campbell, presumably as a way to keep close track of Miss Mangro. Dream also scolded Miss Mangro for failing to buy Garland a gift after her contract was signed, given that Garland was the person who connected her to Dream. While a Appreciative of Epic's $35,000 advance, Ms. Mangro had been working and then sitting around without any compensation for many months. The advance was not enough money for Ms. Mangro to hire. It's like, what? She only had $35,000. Now you want her to give $15,000 of that to this person that she doesn't even know, move in with this person. Now she got $20,000 left. She's supposed to be buying gifts for fucking girl. Like, what? The advance was not enough money for Miss Mangro to hire her own assistant, pay for her living expenses, and pay Garland a, fi a finder's fee. Man, this is just a big old finesse. They was just hustling this woman. Poor thing. Miss Mangro had no idea when or if another paycheck would come. Garland then began pressuring Miss Mangro to give him ten thousand dollars to expand his security business he said that dream promised to pay him a finder's fee but had not paid it and that he was in a precarious financial position for the first time miss mangro pushed back she told dream that with only thirty five thousand dollars she did not have enough money to pay campbell rent an apartment and give garland money or a gift dream was angry and chastised miss Man it's like how are you gonna be mad at basic math if you do the math, she ends up with no money. What? Dream was angry and chastised Miss Mangro. Um, Mangro, Mangro. Maybe it's Mangro, Mangro. For being selfish, accusing her of not being serious about music. How is she not serious about music? Because she doesn't want to give all these people her money. Accusing her of not being serious about music because she could not pay for her own assistant and did not treat the people who helped her get to where she was correctly. <laughs> Miss Mangro attempted to explain, but there was no point. Dream simply continued berating her. Soon thereafter, Dream coerced Miss Mangro to have sex in the bathroom. So every time there's one of these incidents, then he wants to have sex with her. He purposely banged her face against the sink, causing her right eye to swell and bruise. Several people, so it was like he would get mad and then he would want to be, he would want to essentially sexually assault her and hurt her. So it's like he didn't want her to go out of town. So he had violent sex with her and then he cut off her air supply and he choked her. This time she pushed back on the money. He has this violent sex with her and he hits her face on the sink and now her eye is messed up. Her eye is black. Several people in the studio asked what happened to her eye. Miss Mangro lied and said she ran into something. We almost there, y'all. This is page, we are, we, I just finished page 40. I think it's 60 pages. So we got 20 pages, 20 pages left. We almost, we almost there. Miss Mangrove tries to complete her album and is subjected to repeated abuse by Dream. By the end of July 2015, Miss Mangrove was desperate to get back into the studio, finish her work, and move on to the next step in the process. She believed that being signed to Epic would provide the necessary buffer between her and Dream. Miss Mangrove should have been 
given some control over her recording budget, but Dream maintained full control over it via his role as chairman of Contra. Overseeing Miss Mangrove's budget allowed Dream to book and arrange everything, so he maintained complete control over Miss Mangrove. As a result, when Miss Mangrove returned to Atlanta to finish her record, she was living in mid-range in in mid-range hotels and Airbnbs while while her recording engineers were placed in four-star hotels. This was designed to punish and embarrass Miss Mango because Dream was angry that she requested a new hotel during her last stay. When Miss Mango questioned why those supporting her album were placed in better hotels than she was, Dream made snide remarks about her only wish, wishing she could stay in a four-star hotel. He called her ungrateful. Ms. Mangro got back into the, whole, into the studio in early August 2015. Dream and Tricky began demanding that she pay for the food they ordered. Oftentimes, Dream would not touch the food. It was just a test and a way for Dream to control the small amount of money she was given. Dream also made Ms. Mangro order champagne and cupcakes for the studio personnel. He said that she needed to learn how to treat the people supporting her, which was ironic given the way he treated her. Dream's abusive behavior continued to escalate. While recording in August 2015, another artist complimented Miss Mangrove's shoes, which angered him, which angered Dream. He looked Miss Mangrove in, locked her into a room. Wait, he locked Miss Mangro into a room off the studio and sexually and physically assaulted her while Garland guarded the door. So anytime somebody complimented her, anytime she asked questions, anytime she tried to do anything, he raped her, allegedly. On one occasion, Miss Mangro's a and at Epic, Erica Coulter joined Dream and Miss Mangro in the studio. During this session, Coulter personally witnessed Dream pulling Miss Mangro's hair tie out, pulling her hair back to open her mouth and forcibly pouring vodka down her throat. Coulter also saw Dream touch Miss Mangro's body while in the studio. When Miss Mangro caught Coulter's eye, she mentioned to her asking if she saw what just happened and suggesting she was uncomfortable. Coulter brushed off Dream's violent actions. Coulter also saw implicit sexual text messages between Dream and Miss Mangro during this session, leaving no doubt that she knew what Dream's true intentions with Miss Mangro were. <sighs> Around the same time, Dream told Miss Mangro that he got his gun license back and could start carrying his own guns again. In a show of violent um, machismo, Dream, Garland, and other others arranged for Dream's multiple firearms to be returned to him in the parking lot of Tricky Studio by means of parking two cars next to each other and ostentatiously moving guns from one car to the other. Ms. Mangro witnessed this entire charade and was terrified of Dream's, um, of Dream's comfort with guns. After this, Dream regularly kept a gun on him. When he forced Ms. Mangro to have sex, he would often place the gun next to her as a warning. Miss Mangro was becoming increasingly isolated from her family. She spent so much of her time worrying about keeping Dream happy that she had little time to focus on anything else. Dream began getting pushy about meeting Miss Mangro's mother. She tried to put it um she tried to put it off because she was afraid that Dream would hurt her mother or that her mother would see Dream's abuse. Eventually, Miss Mangro's mother arrived in Atlanta while Miss Mangro was recording at the studio. Miss Mangro's mother went to the studio to pick up Miss Mangro and met the sound engineer, Nate Alford. When Alford told Dream that he met Miss Mangro's mother, Dream was furious because Alfred met her before he did. Dream was livid and pulled Miss Mangro to the staircase of the studio. While, the, while in the staircase, Dream forcibly pulled Miss Ma See, every single time he gets upset, he 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 rapes her, allegedly. Dream was livid and pulled Miss Mangro to the staircase of the studio. While the stair while in the staircase, Dream forcibly pulled Miss Mangro's dress up, forced her down on the stairs, and proceeded pro proceeded to forcibly rape her from behind while he held her arms with one hand. What? What?
I'm reading. I've, I haven't read that. Like I've, I've listened to somebody else read this a little bit, but I haven't read all of this. So I'm like, this is, I haven't, I didn't know about this part. My God. Okay, Dream forcibly forcefully pulled Miss Mangrove's dress up, forced her down on the stairs, proceeded to forcibly rape her from behind while he held her arms with one hand and holding the collar of her dress with the other. Miss Mangrove was unable to move with Dream completely controlling her body. He pulled the dress collar tightly around her neck and Miss Mangrove grasped for gasped for air and begged him to stop choking her. He pulled on the collar even harder, calling, causing Miss Mangrove's voice to distort and eventually she was gasping for breath. He continued to pull so intensely at the collar around her neck that Miss Mangrove heard the seams of her dress rip. While he raped her, Dream scolded her, saying that she was difficult, that she did not respect him enough, and that he did everything for her. During this ordeal, Miss Mangrove thought she would not survive this attack. He did this while her mom, he did this because the engineer met her mom before him. Miss Mangrove tried to, to wait. Oh wait, Miss Mangrove's, Miss, Miss Mangrove's mother did not witness the rape or the strangling, but she was concerned about her daughter. She said she felt like she was losing her and was concerned about dream. Miss Mangrove tried to assuage her mother's worry. She admitted that Dream had been sexually and physically aggressive, but lied to her mother by insisting that it had gotten better. Dream's abuse was escalating to the point that it was becoming increasingly difficult to hide her from people as he was regularly flying into a rage over everything. Dream seemed obsessed over Miss, Miss Mangrove's alleged lack of gratitude and the fact that she refused to use her small advance to buy him Garland and other um, and others gifts and or hire his friend. The fact that Miss Mangrove said no to him was simply something that Dream could not get over. In early August 2015, Dream told Miss Mangrove that he found her a manager named G. Roberson. It's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of big names in this lawsuit, Dream. It's a lot of names in this lawsuit, Dream. What are you doing? In early August 2015, Dream told Miss Mangrove that he found her a manager named G. Roberson, who was a good friend of his who managed Drake and Nicki Minaj. Miss Mangrove was thrilled because she desperately wanted to find a way to put distance between her and Dream while fulfilling her co contractual obligation to Contra. She thought that perhaps her new management could protect her. However, things continued to escalate. Hey, Kim. Hey, Cheech. On or around August 15, 2015, Dream told Miss Mangrove to meet him at the studio. Miss Mangrove went to, a, to Silent Studios, but Dream did not show up. The following day, Dream texted Miss Mangrove, I don't feel like we have the same interest for each other. And I dropped something yesterday and waited on you and didn't hear a word. Um, we had a good ride, but truthfully, I can't do it for you. Um, and it's lopsided. Ms. Mangrove responded that she was there and she never um, and he never showed up. Dream said that he was at Red Zone Studio and that she should have known to ask which studio and not assumed it was Silent Studios. He then said, please end text after this and have whoever else contact me from now on. Thank you and good night. And you're and you're welcome. He then continued, don't contact me about anything about this album. And if you want to have a respectful conversation with me, I'll know when I get the time, but not right now. Later that evening, Tricky texted Miss Mangrove that she could come hang at the studio. Miss Mangrove reported to Tricky, who was a partner at Contra, what Dream had been doing to her. Specifically, she stated that I hadn't told you a lot, but I can't take it anymore. And I don't want the music to suffer because um, we do great things, but I can't be on his roller co this roller coaster ride of threats and ending the project if I don't please dream or if I misunderstand something so many times 
um, ha has he yelled at me for the little things? You are a part of Contra Paris too, and I can't take any more. Trickily simply responded, I'll speak to him. Soon after, Ms. Mangrove left the Airbnb where Dream had put um, her up and booked a hotel room near the airport, she was terrified. She believed she needed to escape um, the months of fraud and violence she had endured at Dream's hands. Ms. Mangrove confided in Coulter, sharing her sharing with her by phone on August 17, 2015, that Dream was sexually and emotionally abusive, um, had been violent with her, and was preventing her from finishing her record. At first, Coulter said that as a woman, she understood and would take care of Miss Mangro. Within the hour, however, Coulter had spoken to Dream and told Miss Mangro that she needed to figure out a way to work with Dream again, despite being told of the pattern of abuse Miss Mangro had endured. Miss Mangrove then confided in Mark Stewart, Dream's manager. So she's telling people because she's trying to get help. Miss Mangrove then confided in Mark Stewart, Dream's manager, that Dream was sexually and physically abusive and that it had gotten increasingly worse and she needed help to get away from him. Mark seemed genuinely concerned about Miss Mangrove's safety, but told Miss Mangrove that it seemed like a personal problem that he did not want to be involved in. But of course, far from being exclusive, exclusively a personal, in quotes, issue, Dream's abuse of Ms. Mangrove was part of a parcel of his professional persona and his business of producing and writing music. Ms. Mangrove reiterated to Mark that it was a dangerous situation and that she did not feel safe staying in the hotel because Dream and Garland had such easy access to her. She also told Mark that for her own safety, she would no longer be alone in a room with Dream or Garland. On or about August 19, 2015, Mark finally agreed that he would figure out a solution. The following day, he agreed to arrange a one-way plane ticket to Los Angeles under the um, excuse that Miss Mangro was meeting with Coulter. The ticket was paid for by Epic. Epic, y'all y'all got some explaining to do. Y'all got some explaining to do. I see why y'all didn't take the Safe Music Business Pledge. Because clearly y'all ain't about that, allegedly. When Miss Mangrove arrived in Los Angeles, she called Robertson to explain the abusive nature of the relationship with Dream. Robertson brought Gene Nelson and Jay Irving to the meeting. During the meeting, Robertson said that he would handle Dream and Irving would serve as Miss Man Mangrove's day-to-day -day manager. It just is like there's so like remember how I was saying it was a it's a lot of it's like it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. On August 21st, 2015, Ms. Mangrove then met with Coulter and again reiterated that Dream was abusive and controlling. Ms. Mangrove made clear that regardless of Dream, she was committed to completing the record and moving forward with her contract, but that she needed to be protected from him. Coulter informed Ms. Mangrove that Dream was withholding the music she recorded with him from Epic Records. Pursuant to the contract she signed, Miss Mangro was obligated to turn over music to Epic within a specific time period. Miss Mangro asked her new management and others at Epic for help intervening in the situation, retrieving her music and um, extracting her record from Dream's grasp. For many months, Dream refused to meet with her, and even when he met with her management, he refused to turn over Miss Mangro's music. Having had her trust completely betrayed by Dream, she was very concerned that her management no longer had her best interest in mind. Indeed, in early November 2015, Miss Mangrove was finally scheduled to meet with a representative at Epic, including Reed, L.A. Reed, in, in New York to discuss the future of her album. Tricky, Sylvia Rohn, and then president of, of Epic Records, uh, Joey, and a full marketing team were also present. Like, it's every... Why is, like, everybody is in this? Like, everybody is in this lawsuit. And no, like, and... Shoo. Shortly before the meeting with Reed began, Dream text Miss Mangro, oh, so you tried to play me? Okay, I'll leave you with this. That record is a mistake if you put it out. Don't ever say I didn't look out. 
Miss Mangro had no idea what Dream meant, but knew he did it to rattle her before her meeting with Reed. She did her best to ignore it and hold it together during uh, during the meeting. It was a pivotal moment in Miss Mangro's career. Much to her surprise, however, Irving was a no-show. Her manager was a no-show. Instead, he sent a young intern in his place, okay? It was um, evident during the meeting with Reed um, that Reed found it offensive that Irving did not bother to show up for the meeting. Yeah, I feel that. Reed asked Ms. Mangro where he was. She said she had no uh, she had no answer. Ms. Mangro did her best to keep the meeting on track and reiterate how much she wanted to move forward and make the best record possible for Epic. She told Reed that she had worked for 10 years to get to where she was, but that she was not getting any of her music from Dream and his team and did not know what to do. She confirmed that she wanted to move forward, but there was a problem standing um, in the way. Roan and Reed both responded, Dream, in quotes, at the same, Dream at the same time. Reed then asked Tricky to speak to Dream about the situation. Surprisingly, Tricky also voiced concerns during the meeting that Dream was asking Miss Mangro to sing songs that were not culturally appropriate based on her background. In particular, he mentioned that one of the songs referenced Miss Mangro as a, um, as a Rasta. What? She from Holland. Okay. Tricky told Reed that Miss Mangro had no say in what she was singing and that if she was found to be engaging in cultural appropriation, it would be an issue. Ms. Mangro left the meeting um, believing that Reed and his team understood the situation with Dream and would help. At the time, Reed appeared to agree that they should move forward with other producers. Reed also gave Ms. Mangro his direct phone number and told her to call if she needed anything. However, in early December 2015, Irving suddenly told Ms. Mangro that Reed wanted Dream to be involved in the record again. After she done told these people, this man, this man is sexually assaulting me. They're like, get back in the studio with him. Got it. Ms. Mangrove was terrified at the prospect of having to record with Dream again, but told Irving that she was professional enough to do it if required. She asked Irving if he could at least um, try to arrange work with other producers first with the hope that she would not be forced to work with Dream. Irving replied that they were ready to work with other producers, but that they needed to be careful about the situation with Dream because of the contracts that she signed. It was quite, um, it was quite plainly a no win situation for Miss Mangro, which she remained under, um, while she remained under contract with Dream via Contra, she refused to send any music or schedule. Um, he refused to send any music or schedule studio time. Miss Mangro spent the first few months of 2016 trying to figure out the next step. She texted Coulter in late January and said, in quotes, I'm a little lost as to why I'm still not in the studio yet. It's been forever and I, and I want to move forward. Do you know what it is? It's, um, is it because me and Dream had a dispute or is it something else? Um, last sesh was in Atlanta in August, trying to get some clarity for, um, from all sides. In February 2016, Ms. Mangro was told that Epic finally approved a budget for her to shoot a video for Married to the Game. Ms. Mangro was never informed what the budget was or how it was approved. And when she pressed for that information, she was stonewalled. God forbid you want to know what's going on with your own business, right? Irving, however, said that Dream refused to collaborate or respond, which delayed the process. Eventually, wait, oh wait, Miss Mangro told Irving to ensure that Dream and his team were copied on all communications related to the video shoot because she wanted to guarantee that she was abiding by her contractual obligation. Irving, however, said that Dream refused to collaborate or respond, which delayed the process. Eventually, Irving said that they could not continue waiting for Dream to respond and had to move forward. As Irving said to Miss Mangro, Dream is already um, withholding music. We got to move now. Finally, in March 2016, the video shoot for Married to the Game was scheduled. Miss Mangro immediately went to work to figuring out the, um, the vision and the look for the video. She asked her management to always keep dream in the loop particularly because she still had no control or say over the budget miss mangrove's management sent dream the treatment for the video he never responded or provided any input on the day of the shoot irving once um once again did not show up miss mangrove was given a bag of generic clothes that did not fit the style of the shoot all of the vision 
um, all and all of the vision boards she created were ignored. The video was incredibly important to, um, to Miss Mangrove's career. It was her moment to show Reed and Epic Records how she could be marketed to the world and to convince Epic to increase the recording budget so she could get back into the studio. We at the home stretch, y'all. I'm on that's that was page 49. So this is page 50. So we got 10 pages left. Dream called her to say he heard the video was terrible and said, in quotes, this is what you get when you don't listen to me. You got played. In April 2016, Ms. Mangrove flew to Los Angeles using her own money to do a um, to do reshoots of the video because she cared so deeply about getting it right. A few weeks later, Irving confirmed to Ms. Mangrove that he sent the revised video to Reed and to, Ep and to Epic Records team. In May 2016, Irving told Ms. Mangrove that Reed loved the video. Ms. Mangrove was thrilled and said she was anxious to move things along. Also in early May 2016, Ms. Mangrove's product manager at Epic Records, Franz de Los Reyes, texted her to say that the video was dope, in quotes, and that they were planning to um, pr planning the premiere. However, Coulter suddenly told Ms. Mangro that Dream complained about the video, that nobody at Epic Records liked the video, and that she should have worked with Dream on the video. Ms. Mangro was shocked and confused. She had little insight into why she was getting such mis mixed messages from those working with her at Epic and had the sense that Dream was continuing to put up obstacles in her career. Ms. Mangro pleaded with Coulter to see what Dream was doing. He was playing games and creating roadblocks after roadblock. Ms. Mangro said again that her team spent six weeks reaching out to, to the Dream about the video. He sent, um, sent him the treatment to the video and he refused to respond. Now that it was complete, Dream was complaining simply to derail her career again. Man, it just, this is, this is awful. Coulter, who knew about Dream's abuse, refused to provide any help or solutions to Miss Mangro. Instead, she simply said that Miss Mangro um, needed to get on the same page as Dream. <sighs> get on the same page with things with Dream for things to proceed. She also left she also left unanswered Miss Mangrove's repeated questions about who was in possession of her music, even though as her label, Epic should have been able to provide this information to her. Miss Mangrove did not know where to return. Irving, her manager, told her that Reed loved the video. Coulter, who worked at Epic, told her that nobody at Epic liked the video, and Dream seemed to be taking great joy at the confusion and chaos it was co it was causing. Miss Mangro pleaded with Coulter to arrange a meeting with Reed to explain what happened and figure out how to how everyone could move forward. Reed, who had changed his phone number, was no longer directly reachable. On June 25, 2016, Miss Mangro attended Epic Fest, a music festival showcasing artists signed to Epic record uh late uh the epic record label she hoped that would provide the opportunity to get in front of reed for a discussion about next steps um miss mangro was scheduled to go to the festival with irving but just 30 minutes before they were supposed to leave irving said he was still in las vegas and could wouldn't um and would meet her there miss mangro was shocked but determined to go while she was at Epic Fest, Dream called Miss Mangro and told her that Epic was washing, in quote, washing their hands of her. Miss Mangro did not know what he was talking about and thought that he was simply trying to harass her. Miss Mangro then ran into Reed, Joey, and Coulter. Miss Mangro asked Reed if they could talk. Reed responded by saying, in quotes, hey, baby, maybe later, we gotta go, and grabbed Joey and ran off. Coulter then looked at Miss Mangro um, with a smirk and said, in quotes, talk to your manager why why um talk talk to your manager why are you here you're dropped irving should have talked to you already wow so she found out she was dropped at epic fest and her manager didn't tell her wow Irving, despite stating that he would meet Miss Mangro at Epic Fest, never appeared. 
Miss Mangrove was caught off guard and felt humiliated because she was slowly realizing that perhaps everyone knew something that she would ne she was never told. This is awful. This is this is a mean. This is some mean shit. Like this is mean. Miss Mangrove then spoke to Roan, Sylvia Roan, and asked if she knew what Coulter meant. Roan said that she had no idea and offered to look into it. Miss Mangrove reached out to Irving as soon as possible. He admitted to her that he heard through the grapevine that she may be dropped by Epic. However, given that there was no official notification or anything more than a rumor, he did not want to bother Miss Mangrove with the rumor. On July 15, 2016, Miss Mangrove got the official word that Epic no longer wanted to distribute her music because Dream failed to deliver the records. So she went through all of that. Just to end up, mm. Joey told Miss Mango that she was in quotes dropped because Contra failed to deliver the records and Dream was difficult to work with. I can't tell y'all as an ad, as an advocate for like artists and writers and stuff like that how much this happens. How much you're signed when you're signed to a production company or you're signed to a joint venture and the the relationship with the JV sours with the mate with the major company and then everything gets fucked everything is fucked and you have no control damn that's terrible so Joey told Miss Mangro that she was dropped because Contra failed to deliver the records. Uh, Dream was difficult to work with, yet nobody at any point sat down with Miss Mangro to discuss the situation with her. She was left in the dark throughout the entire process, despite both Contra and Epic having signed a contract and owing corporate responsibilities to her. And despite agents of both entities knowing that Miss Mangro had been the subject of Dream's violent and coercive manipulation, which they knew or should have known, were pre um, predicated in fraudulent promises of um of record contracts grammys and opening for beyonce to this day miss mangro is in the dark about whether or not she is still bound to dream and contra paris who owns her music rights or where the recording of her music um, of her work are located dream got what he wanted he caused so much chaos and confusion with epic that they simply no longer wanted to deal with miss mangro who had successfully duped in um who was who had successfully duped into a fraudulent and coercive sexual relationship. It was a devastating blow to a young, talented artist who had done everything possible to survive the situation with Dream and move forward. Yet, it became abundantly clear that Dream was only interested in an artist who was fully compliant with all of his demands. When Miss Mangrove finally found the courage to stand up to him ever so slightly, he no longer found her to be worthy of his time and set out to ensure that nobody else would work with her either. Within a few weeks of Epic notifying her team that they did not want to proceed, Miss Mangrove's management team dropped her as well. So she got dropped by her label and she got dropped by her management. Not only did Dream ruin Miss Mangrove's chance with Epic, she, he also ensured that she could not work for the next decade by refusing to officially release her from her contract. As a result, if she recorded music, she would be in breach of her contract agreement. Oh my God, like this is triggering me because I just know so many people in this situation. I know artists that are stuck in this situation. This is so fucked up. This is what being shelved is. That's what that is. Wow. Wow. As a result, if she recorded music, she would be in breach of her contract agreement. She begged to be released from Contra, but they continue to ignore her, her request. Miss Mangrove lost everything, her ability to work as an artist, her ability to work in the United States, and her ability to live a life free from trauma, the trauma Dream inflicted. Miss Mangrove's suffering following Dream's abuse and manipulation. Miss Mangrove has not been the same since Dream's abuse and her experience with Contra and Epic, and she believes that the experience broke her as an artist and as a woman. 
When she finally understood the devastation Dream's um, actions caused, she lost her, pa her passion for music and life in general. She spent several years rarely leaving her house. When Miss Mangro would try to sing, she would have flashbacks and panic would set in and she could no longer do what her um do what her entire life purpose had been previously dream sexual assaults physical violence and manipulation weighed on uh, mangro for almost a decade in late december 2016 mangro's general practitioner for, referred her for treatment of anxiety and depression because she was suffering from panic attacks insomnia and lethargy she could not speak about the sexual abuse dream inflicted until 2018 and then worked in, worked in therapy to attempt to get her life back. However, Miss Mangrove's life will never be the same. She lost a decade of her life due to dreams abuse and the willingness of Contra, Epic, and Reed to look the other way. She remains unable to engage in her work as a recording artist due to the pain and devastation she endured. So... I'm going to read y'all the what the causes of action are. And then we can wrap this up. So the first cause of action is sex trafficking. Um, the So that's the first cause of action is sex trafficking. The sex cause of action, the second cause of action is sexual battery. Um, the third cause of action is rape. Um, and... This is a demand for a jury trial. And um, yeah, that is her story. Someone said, who is the plaintiff? Her name is, let me see. Her name is Shanaz Mangro, AKA, Shawnee Monroe. This was awful. This was awful. Yeah, that was awful. Shawnee Monroe. The music industry is a cesspool for sexual violence. Like, I legit think that the music industry might just be one big sex trafficking ring of young people. That they use your dream of making it. And it's not like you're dealing with people who aren't in this like with this this case in particular it's like it's the dream he's one of the biggest writers in the game so why would you not believe him why would you not believe that he's gonna write you these records and do the you know what I mean and it just is so heartbreaking at how many people with this this situation that she allegedly reached out to um that were people that were in positions of power that did nothing that the record company was just like, just throw her away. We don't feel like dealing with this. It's awful. It's awful. Thank you for reading this, Tiffany. Of course, my head hurts now. I need to go eat some food. But I just wanted to read the whole thing so that it was on my page. So for anybody that wants to just sit and listen to the lawsuit, you can. If you um, want to go read it or any other lawsuits, there's... Um, you know, I have the lawsuits, um, you know, I'm going through the process of getting P my hands on PDF files for, for these lawsuits, um, particular, um, particularly with people in the music industry. So if you want to read the lawsuits that we have so far, you can visit the, um, the link at the, um, that's pinned at the bottom. Um, you can go to the 100 percenters website and you can read this for yourself. But I, I wanted to read it because, you know, like I said earlier, you know, a lot of people click headlines and don't get the full story. There's no article that's going to give you that full thing. It just isn't. You know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to read it to y'all. And, you know, you make of it whatever you make of it. But what I think is it's fucked up. 
And I believe this woman, even though we have to say allegedly for these platforms, I want to tell, I'm saying I believe her. I believe her, especially given his past, like seeing all of the, the other, you know, the, the law, the, what Nivea said about him, you know, it's like, it's all the same kind of thing. It's like choking must be his thing, I guess. I don't know. It's terrible. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go eat a late dinner. Um, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.